Good evening, everyone. I'm Elizabeth George, Chief Membership Officer with the American Guild of Organists. And I am delighted to welcome you to a webinar with a topic that is very dear to my heart. And uh, we're, we're going to try not to use the recruitment word a lot tonight. We're going to use relationships. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can develop those relationships so that you can grow your membership. Uh, we do want you to post questions. So please do post questions in the uh, Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. We'll also try to monitor the chat. And uh, I was unsuccessful last time in, in uh, launching polls, and I don't know if I've gotten any better this time, but I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. And you do have some emoji reactions down there. So if you want to uh, put a thumbs up or laugh or whatever when I ask you these, please feel free to do so. Uh, I'm uh, and, and as well, this is being recorded. So uh, recording will probably go out within uh, 48 hours and any handouts as well will accompany it. So with us tonight, we have some really wonderful subject knowledge experts. We have J.W. Arnold, who is AGO's marketing and communication specialist, but also serves on the chapter specialist marketing communications team, as does Lynn Francisco. And we also have with us uh, David Outs, Jason Sogwe, Mark Anderson. I think I don't think I left anybody out. And they are also serving on a chapter leadership uh, specialist team. So I really want you to get to know our members of our specialist teams. They've done some great things uh, in helping some of our members and will continue to do so. So it's important that you rely on them when you have questions. All right, so let's start with, uh, this is this is the first. Um, how many in your chapter have a really good recruitment strategy? Anybody want to do a thumbs up? Any any emojis? All right, well, I'll, I'll do the second question then. How many of you like to recruit people? Okay, no emojis for that, but I better, oh. I bet I, Lars, you raised your hand. Um, I'm gonna give you a second. Um, I'm sorry, I don't see your question there. If you could please just uh, post them in the uh, Q&A, that would be helpful. And we will address these as we go along. Thank you very much. All right, so let's talk about relationship building. You know, it's it's different in every chapter. You all have your own cultures, but I like to think about, you know, it's about the prospect who you're trying to get to join your chapter and what interests them rather than what you offer. And this is a mistake that a lot of associations uh, make, including yours truly, on our website, we list a bunch of things, but we're working on a much stronger value proposition. So first of all, that's the first thing I'd like to say is if you can kind of gauge what that person, once you've identified them, might really be looking for, that's the way you sell the membership. I don't know if anybody remembers the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. This was a game that came out, oh gosh, in the early thousands. And the whole premise was that you could name six people that had either worked with him, knew him, were related to him, uh, were featured in a film with him, but it all came back at the end to uh, Kevin Bacon. And I'd like you to use this kind of philosophy, if you could please, when you're thinking about um, people that you've identified that are not members of your chapter, but that you know you'd like them to be members of your chapter. So it might be that you get together with your board. And by the way, I have a very strong statement that says membership is everybody's business. And it'll be on a slide a little later. So it's not just up to the, uh, the registrar or the counselor. Uh, if you've got a membership coordinator, it's everybody's business. So when you're looking, say you've identified two or three people that you know are not members, you really wish they were, how do you know them? Maybe there's a relationship there. Have you looked on LinkedIn? 
Can you see where they studied? Maybe you at one point studied with the same teacher. Maybe for briefly, you went to the same um, conservatory or college. Um, it, it really is about, you know, you can Google them as well. Um, you both may be teaching uh, someone or have a student that you both worked with. So it's all about building relationships and thinking outside the box uh, rather than saying, oh gosh, I really want to get this person to join, but wait a second, let's think, who else might know him and how might they know him and how might we research where the connection might be? So having said that, I am going to turn this over to Mark Anderson, who is going to share a little bit more about his thoughts about building relationships. Mark, please feel free to unmute yourself and show yourself. There you go. Hi, Elizabeth. Well, I've uh, worked through several different chapters with these type things. And the one thing that I can tell you, especially coming out of the pandemic like we did, where people began to interact online with organ more than in person with organ. I know that certainly uh, our church went completely on video services during that time. So what we have found coming out of those periods in our life is that people are, they have a habit once they get into something like all of the, the YouTube videos that are out there and the workshops and everything, they tend to kind of cloister themselves and it takes a difficult time getting them back out in the real world. So we found that one of the most important things is social events. Rather than just another organ concert or just another workshop on registration, we're trying to plan some highly social events this year and we're very careful to plan things that are interesting to our new young members as well, because those are going to be the future life of the chapter. And it doesn't do us any good to keep the chapter alive right now if 10 years from now we're left with five members. So we we're really trying to plan things. I know that um, in January 20th, we're going to do something that we call Smorgan's Board, where we do workshops and programs, brief concerts throughout the day on a Saturday. And we have food and we have games and we have a lot of things for the young people as well. I know that it's important not to keep our meetings in the same place all the time moving around to different areas of our chapter. Don't keep it based in the central city. Go to some of the smaller churches outside, get people involved, and for heaven's sakes, invite all of the church members from any location that you are to join you on that day, because it's those people who will spread the news to friends. Involve your local music stores, if you have any of them left. But um, it's really important that we think about collaborating with other chapters. I know that we've got other chapters very close around us. And one of my big points of motivation uh, this next year is going to be planning doing things together. One of our members is going to be doing a recital um, in Durham, North Carolina at Duke University. And we're going to try to get the, uh, the Durham chapter involved with us in helping to promote that. And that's, we always invite the chapters around us to join with us when we do things as well. So social events, moving your meetings around to different areas. And one of the things that I have found to be really important, young people, young organists are very much into computers. 
So we're trying to do some workshops, basically for young people, organists and pianists alike, who want to know more about the organ. And we're going to be using some free software that you can get online called Grand Org, um, and talking a little bit about some of the paid software as well, such as Helpwork, so that people can do a computer aspect of getting involved with organ as well. This whole social thing, face to face, reach out and touch, it's what's going to save us. You just mentioned two uh, software that uh, we're thinking about, I'm going to approach because we wanna get more member discounts. And uh, I think it'd be great if we could give everybody a discount for, for help work and Grand Org, and there are a couple of others that I will be uh, campaigning for. Um, uh, Lynn, I'm going to ask you to uh, take it away now. Hello. All right, let me do this. I'll go ahead and share my screen because I actually have some slides I wanted to share with you today. All right, and let me do this. Oops. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Can you all see that? All right. So um, our opening event this year, so I'm also the Dean of the Durham Chapel Hill chapter. Um, and so our opening event this year was actually a collaboration with one of the area churches. Um, and it was a benefit concert for two um, area nonprofits that deal with food insecurity, um, particularly with feeding children and all of that. And so <clears throat> we did our um, our collaboration that um, gave exposure to all of our um, organizations. Um, this was the flyer that that was created by um, one of the organizations. And um, it was pretty widely shared in the area. Orange and Chatham counties, so two kind of largest counties in the state of North Carolina, and so we had a lot of exposure to this, and you know a lot of people asking who's Cora, who's Table, who's the AGO, so it provided a nice opportunity for us to get our name out there to people who wouldn't necessarily know who we were, and um, we also attracted a lot of people as well to this um, recital. Um, even though um, the main focus really was uh, Rachmaninoff because, you know, 150th um, anniversary of his birth and all that. But um, there were also a couple of organ pieces that were played. And so then people also who wouldn't ordinarily hear organ music got a chance to hear it um, at this particular concert. So it was a really nice collaboration that we had, um, you know, again, bringing attention to uh, to these three organizations that maybe not many people knew about in the area. Um, one of the things that I had created, and this was just kind of a last minute thing that I created, was a display board. Um, and so this one, I just found a bunch of recent pictures um, from some of our recent events, um, members recitals, pedals, pipes, and pizza, that type of thing. Um, and so um, since the other tables, um, the other organizations had little things that says who they were and what their mission was, I thought, well, why didn't I create something like that so people could have a look at this? And they'd be like, oh, what's the AGO? There's a little explanation. Um, you know, what's the AGO's mission? And so I put it there. And then as you could see, there's also a little QR code that I had created that points back to the chapter's website. And so if people wanted to know more information about the Durham Chapel Hill chapter and about the AGO in general, then that um, QR code would point them to a, web, a website that would tell them um, where to find that information. And uh, lastly, well, not lastly, this is my second point here. Um, so we were talking about creating relationship with people. And so um, my day job is at Duke University. Um, I do a lot of things with the Office of Undergraduate Education there. And so um, one of our tasks also has to do with administering several of Duke's merit scholarship programs. And so um, 
I noticed that one of our merit scholarship students had in his bio the fact that he was a concert pianist and an organist. And I thought, huh, I wonder. So I just took a chance. I sent him an email and asked him, uh, told him, so I noticed that you said you were an organist in your bio. Do you happen to be a member of the AGO? He wrote back saying, well, I'm not, but my dad is. And so I said, well, would you be interested in being an AGO member? Um, I know that, um, you know, people with his particular scholarship are generally, you know, students in financial need. But, you know, I just um, pointed him to the web page that says, this is how much the membership would be for the young organist with T uh, print TAO, without print TAO. And um, one of the perks, too, is that um, you would get to be on a mailing list that if anyone needs uh, any substitutes, what we usually do is that um, we send an email out to the entire membership that says, you know, Church X needs a sub for such and such a time, such and such a date. And so I thought, OK, I'll just go ahead and send this to him, see what he says. The next thing I know, I receive an email from Elizabeth that says, you have a new young organist member. And I thought, wow, <laughs> I guess what I said must have uh, convinced him. So, you know, that probably wouldn't have happened if I didn't think about reaching out to him on the basis of this bio. So Lynn, great. I so applaud what you did. Uh, you know, <laughs> it doesn't hurt, right? What can you lose if you don't try? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I just Lars, kind of took a chance. <laughs> absolutely. Lars Anderson has a question. Lars, I'm going to, um, I've unmuted you. So what is your question, please? Can you unmute yourself? You should be able to. I I hit the wrong button. I didn't have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All righty. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lynn. Uh, I, I actually have one more, one more thing. Yes, please. Okay, so last thing. Um, so um, I'm actually a regular sub in the area. And so there was one Sunday I was subbing for a colleague of mine in North Raleigh. And um, after the service, I noticed there were like five or six kids who approached the organ bench. They're like elementary school age, like maybe between the ages of six and nine or something like this. And so they came up to the organ and they asked me, this is such a cool thing. Can you show us how it works? And I said, sure, I'd be happy to. So then I spent the next half an hour with them, just showing them um, how the organ worked, um, you know, pulling out different stops, um, showing them how different things work. Like here's how the strings sound, here's how the principles sound, you know, that type of thing. And some of them were also piano students as well. So I let them go on the bench and play some things. And they all really enjoyed it. And I said, you know, guys, if you want to learn how to play the organ too, then as soon as, you know, Mr. You know, regular organist comes back from his vacation, why don't you contact him and then ask him um, for lessons? Because I also knew that he, he teaches organ as well. And so I'm just kind of hoping that bears fruit because I mean, these kids were genuinely curious. And so I was more than happy to spend the time with them to show them how the organ worked. I I, I think that's just great. You know, I, I attended a Petals, Pipes and Pizza uh, recently that uh, Nicole Moraine, who is our counselor for conventions uh, presented and they were all over, they were all over that organ. They wanted to try it out, um, the different sounds, the stops. It It's a magnificent, as Mark said, computer if you will, it is, it is a computer, which is very cool. Uh, and you, you think of all the games the kids are playing. Well, this is another great game that they can play. So I'm so glad that you're doing it. And you, you have the ability as you're subbing to even grow this awareness to more young people. So kudos to you, Lynn. I think that's wonderful. Uh, David, David, you want to share some thoughts? Yes, I have to start my video. Yes, you do. There we go. Hello from Memphis, everyone. Um, I am here to basically share and admit that uh, we don't have the recruitment patent in the Memphis chapter either. Um, but we have some things that have worked through the years. And I know different things work with different chapters. 
Um, one of the things that has worked in Memphis for decades, I'll say, is a uh, standard meeting day and time. Um, the Memphis chapter has historically met on the first Monday of each month from September to May, with the exception of September, because that's Labor Day. So uh, we have a, a standard, that first uh, Monday meeting time, um, we, we have a, a gathering time, we have dinner, we have a, a business meeting over dessert, and then we have a program that lasts about an hour. So that has helped people, I think, stay involved and um, the consistency of our meetings has really helped us. Um, we Our, our um, other major uh, city that is uh, with our membership is Jackson, Tennessee, which is about 75 miles to the east. And uh, our Jackson people have historically carpooled and come to Memphis. And that's a big thing as well. Um, and I can also report that um, uh, senior members of the AGO have been picked up through the years and brought to meetings in the city of Memphis by other members. And that has been a big um, relationship building part as well. We do move our meetings around Memphis. Memphis is pretty spread out. It all radiates to the east from the Mississippi River. And um, so we try to move things around, just like Mark was talking about, to um, smaller churches and churches in the outlying suburbs. That seems to help us as well. Um, when I talked about the standard uh, day and meeting time, um, occasionally we do have Saturday events like Pedals, Pipes, and Pizza, or we'll co-sponsor a recital with a church, and that might be a, a Friday night or a, or a Sunday afternoon or something like that. Um, so it's not that we absolutely don't ever um, move meetings around, but uh, we do keep things pretty consistent. I will also say that um, students and scholarships have been a pretty big thing for us in the Memphis chapter. Um, we have a, a, a scholarship fund uh, that um, provides money for uh, you know, high school and junior high students to study with private teachers. I'm not just talking about college and university scholarships, but private um, studio students. And uh, those teachers will bring their students to our AGO meetings. Um, as I said, we have scholarships for um, organ study as well as memberships. And uh, that has helped us as well. Um, David, you've shared some wonderful things about member care. You really have the fact that uh, you make it a practice for carpooling. Uh, for those who can't drive, they get a ride to the meeting. Uh, the fact that there's a social aspect uh, of every event that you do, that's so important. And, you know, food is always a great <laughs> driver as well. So, um, I really uh, applaud what you're doing. And, uh, you know, you mentioned scholarships. Mark, do you want to unmute yourself and just talk for a second about the success you've had in keeping and growing your membership through your scholarship program? Because I know it runs the gamut in ages. Yes, we actually have three scholarship programs uh, that are ongoing. And surprisingly enough, we're able to give some some pretty remarkable prizes for those. And it has been one of the great things to keep young people involved with the chapter. Our Cooper Miller Scholarship, which is coming up by the way, and if any of you young people would like to, um, would like to try out for it, it's a $1,500 prize, plus you get a free trip to one of the POEs as well. Um, but this type thing has worked extremely well for not only attracting young people, but keeping them as well. Thank you. David, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? Anything else you're doing? The only other thing that was on the list is that we um, uh, are continuing to try to uh, recruit our mega church and large Baptist church organists. Um, as you can imagine, uh, we have a goodly number of mega churches in Memphis, which has been known as the city of churches for years. Um, 
That's an ongoing thing. I think we just have to keep the word out there and keep personally inviting people and um, let everybody know that uh, some of us are degreed and some of us are not. And um, uh, the AGO is a pretty inclusive group, I will say. And so that's an ongoing thing. Um, the mega churches um, often have orchestras these days. So there's not uh, always a resident organist there, but uh, that's a that's a, a a continuing thing for us in this chapter. Well, I think that's great. We we want to encourage everyone that there's a place at the table for them, and um, so I think I, I applaud what you're doing. All right, um, let's see, Jason. I believe you had some comments you wanted to share. Yes. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. The uh, uh, my contribution really uh, sort of dovetails into what Mark and David uh, both uh, both said about uh, sort of uh, an, an interpersonal connection with uh, with possible new members in your chapter. Uh, and I love the 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 theme that Elizabeth said at the beginning that it's not so much about recruitment as it is about relationship building. Um, uh, because that's that's really at the at the core of uh, of of what it is to to really build any organization and and you know organists especially know about uh, re recruiting rec there, there's the or, or building relationships to uh, to to build numbers in in your choir so you can you can think of uh, uh, sort of your chapter as as sort of a, a similar sort of organic organization that are, is also made of made of people so the really a lot of the, the same strategies that you would use to uh to encourage uh choir membership you can you can also apply that to uh to to chapter membership in a lot of ways and um you know uh i am uh, the director of music at uh, first united methodist in conway arkansas i'm the i'm the dean of the central arkansas chapter uh and conway is about a 30 minute drive north of conway and uh one of the uh one of the the typical ways of uh, of finding new new people to uh to enter into various ministries liturgical ministries music ministries was to run an ad in the in the bulletin you know just a, a want ad sort of the general thing and um uh, of course, uh, the, the big question is, well, why, why, why aren't, uh, why aren't people responding to that? And uh, the, 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 the reason why is that uh, uh, that, that doesn't really, uh, that's, that's a very passive way of, of, uh, of, of entering into a relationship because if any, anything that you, uh, if you, you want to attract uh, new people, you have to approach them personally and, and, uh, you know, put out your hand and, and introduce who you are and, and uh, invite them. To become a part of what you want to have grow, so that's that's really that's really at the at the heart of everything. And uh, uh, one thing uh, in the in the AGO chapter to to remember is that the members that you have now are your best marketers. They're your your best uh, your best advertisers. Uh, and uh, in in uh, one one thing that that I've really stressed in my uh, dean's letters in the um in in the, in our our clarion news newsletter that comes out once a month um is that uh you know in, invite someone that you know invite someone you know to the the meeting to the uh we we call it the punch bowl it's the sort of the gathering time beforehand uh it's it's really just sort of a mixer to to meet meet people and and catch up with with what what's been going on and then we have our our meal so uh, the you know that 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 precedes the, our our meeting, but uh, uh, all of the uh, all the the entire membership are the those are the the most powerful uh, uh, marketers for uh, for for growth within your I, within your group. I couldn't agree with you more. That's why uh, my slogan, "Membership is everybody's business," I feel is so important. Absolutely, uh, that's wonderful. You know, we did have a question and. Um, I, I um, can share uh, one answer. Someone asked, how many pedals, pipes, and pizzas do your chapters produce a year? Jason, does your, do, do you do one annually or do you do more we, than one? 
we have we have done one in the past, but we are uh, planning. That's part of this year's program. We were we were doing one at Mark in March, and we are doing one at at my parish here in in, uh, in Conway at First Methodist, uh, in conjunction with uh, St. Peter's Episcopal, which is really it's it's about a block away. So we can, uh, uh, you know, we we can we can shepherd the, the the children from from one one place to the next. Uh, and this this parish especially has a very uh, large interest, you know, just like what Lynn was saying that there 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 are usually you know at around post loop time there there are, there are children who who gather in the loft to to see what the organ is doing and uh, and that sort of thing. There's there's a there's a a great interest here. Um, and as, as something else that we do with uh, with the children's music program, the the the, the various choirs, uh, children's choirs, different levels, uh, usually towards the end of the of the semester, uh, we'll we'll just we'll bring them all up into the choir loft, and I'll do a, a mini um, uh, sort of little little pipe organ encounter sort of thing to give them, you know give them a rundown what 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 uh what what the different stop families are and let them hear hear the different different groups and and then let some people take a test drive at the console which is always a a, a wonderful opportunity for them but yes yeah we we do that that's great anybody else want to comment about your pedals pipes and pizzas feel free well i i um have been in contact with Don Marler, who is the dean of the Nashville chapter. And they recently got their uh, very first Orgel Kids kit, and they're thrilled to death. And they are, his strategy this year is he's going to do pedals, pipes, and pizzas all around the surrounding areas of Nashville. So he's got several scheduled, and he's going to bring his Orgel Kids kit with him which is another wonderful way for them to be able to touch that little mini organ and experiencing experience that. Um, but I do, I do think that everything everybody has said, the social aspect, the fact that um, you want to be welcoming, it's who knows who knows who knows who that eventually knows someone and that everybody in your chapter it's it's not just your your board of officers. It's everyone that really has the potential to grow membership. I think at this point, I'm going to turn it over to JW because we did say we had recruitment in a box and we may have some things to share with you. Now, I can screen share if you don't have the, the slides up, JW. It's I'm, up to I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. You know, you only get one opportunity to make a first impression. And uh, so what we've been working on in the AGO Marketing Committee and with the Chapter Specialist Support Team are some templated uh, tools that, that each chapter could, could use to you know, help to make that impression. And I'd like to share just a couple of those with you today. And I'm going to share my screen. The first, uh, these are three prototypes. Um, I know that most of you probably have been to an event and you've seen those pull-up banners that have a hard, flat uh, metal base. And so we're, we're working on some templates. These aren't quite final yet, but, but it's something that you can set up at the entrance to your event to really show them uh, that they're there. Uh, we include a call to action on it, either uh, optional QR code or a URL. And the great news with these is they're relatively inexpensive and available from a number of vendors. So for instance, these are sized for Vistaprint. And if you're familiar with Vistaprint, it's very affordable and also, um, also ships very quickly. So um, it, the, in the new year, if this is something you might be interested in with your chapter, please contact either Elizabeth or myself, and we can get you started on that. Another another kind of basic resource that we realized that didn't really exist were name tags. And so we've created a couple of different formats of Avery name tags so that you can 
personalize your chapter name on that and then also your members names and then just purchase the the plastic holders for them and you've got this for week after week and we've done several different uh formats from the ones that that clip on to the ones that sit in the clear plastic holders and then finally i'd like to remind you about one of the greatest membership benefits that we have uh in AGO, and that's that's a, a discount to Sheet Music Plus. To, uh, AGO members have a ten percent discount, and that's something you can share with with your prospective members, the ones that are musicians, is to let them know that hey, you know that adds up, and in the course of a year, you might save enough to cover your dues for the year. The same goes for many of the other. Uh, vendors that Elizabeth has, has arranged uh, discounts for. I'm, I'm thinking about one license as another one. So uh, so don't be afraid to uh, do that. You know, don't be afraid to to prepare a letter to your, your clergy or your your HR counsel at your church to to let them know. And and don't be afraid to ask to uh, ask them to cover your membership. Uh, it's a it's a really a great benefit to you. It's a great benefit to the church. And uh, so if you have interest in any of these things, please feel free to reach out to Elizabeth and we'll be glad to help you. It, you know, it was amazing to me. I've been to several chapter programs and not many of them use name badges. And you, I, I like the permanent ones because you can recycle them. Uh, if you have a prospective member or guest coming, you can put a little blue dot or red dot on them, which will acknowledge that maybe people want to go up and be really friendly and introduce themselves. The other thing is um, we can even work on, on a script for you if you'd like. Often, uh, I know you're so concerned about the uh, planning and execution of a program that you sometimes might just forget uh, when you uh, before you're welcoming and introducing your presenter uh, to just stop and say, hey, do we have any new members here? Please raise your hand. Do we have any visitors here? We'd love to, to, to get to know you. Please let us know. And another thing is, and I know this is this sounds like it's just should be something that everybody does, but have a sign up sheet, have a, have a registration desk there. Have someone, even if they're members, first of all, this is the way you're going to be able to track who's attending your events, have your members sign in, but then also have your prospects, the people that the friends that might have been invited, have them sign in. And uh, if they would, please add an email address. These simple little things that sometimes just don't occur to us can make all the difference in the world. Uh, I used to have a saying on the door of my office. Um, but now I work from home, so I, I kind of know it by heart, but I used to love how everybody else in the office would walk by. And it says it takes days and weeks and months to recruit a member. It only takes minutes to lose one. And we're going to talk more about this in a retention webinar that's going to be coming up. But uh, I, does anybody else have any questions? I'm just going to look down at the Q&A and see if there are any more. I don't see any here. Um, any last uh, comments from any of our participants, please feel free to show your video and unmute yourselves if you'd like to say some things. Jason? I'd like, I'd like to add one, one thing about uh, sort of advertising uh, to your, to the people that you know on, in social media as, as well. So um, uh, one, one thing that we, we have uh, our, our chapter Facebook page is a, is a, is our our main sort of media media advertiser, but uh, when uh, when when we establish those events, we uh, go ahead and in, in, invite our own friends lists to uh, to attend, even if uh, you know. And you can you can you can go through there and 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 you you have an idea of who who might be interested. Uh, not necessarily just the organist friends that you have, but you know, musician other uh, musician friends who who play other instruments, or even people who are just enthusiastic about music, who attend concerts, or who who may be interested in something some some other other uh, some other form of, uh, of of musical event. So a lot of people have never attended an organ event before, 
um, and then encourage them to share. So share it certainly to your own page and then make it public so other people can share it and encourage other people to to pass the word. Um, that's that's a, a wonderful way of of sort of attracting interest even from the the peripheral you know outside your outside our, our our organ bubbles yet your facebook page is a very powerful tool and i don't think sometimes chapters realize how uh, the impact that it can have it needs you have to have somebody manage it it needs to be kept up to date but it's a great way to spread the word and if you have money as well you can spend a few dollars and expand your reach uh, we are talking about doing that using more and more social media, particularly because we want to grow our young organist member segment. And, uh, you know, through Instagram, uh, there's so many there's so many different media outlets now that we want to take advantage of. Um, anybody else have anything to say? OK, well, I want to thank you all. We've had a very oh, we have one more question here. Let's see what it says. What other ideas does anyone have to recruit various ages of potential organ fans? Well, I, I think that probably, as as several stated, you know, uh, where wherever you're hosting your program, if you're hosting it in a church, invite those members. Please invite those members. You've got a wide range of of ages of people that would be interested, uh, who might become donors, even though they don't play the organ. Um, and you know what, we will put some other suggestions out in the handout that we will be sending out with this video. So I, I just want to, first of all, thank Mark and JW and David and Lynn and Jason tonight for really sharing some wonderful ideas uh, regarding relationship building, because that's what we're going to talk about now instead of recruitment, relationship building. We will not be having any webinars in December because I think you will be occupied elsewhere. However, we will be having um, uh, three wonderful uh, webinars in uh, in January. JW is going to consider uh, continue his uh, series on the uh, part-time organist with uh, what New Year's resolutions do you have? And uh, our co Committee on Career Development and Support on the 16th is going to be having a great, great webinar on, okay, you've got the interview. Now, how do you prepare yourself for it? And then on, I believe it's the 29th of January, and all of these will be up on our website. We'll be promoting them. Our, our chapter uh, specialist and membership team, along with our Committee on Membership Development and Chapter Support, is going to be presenting uh, a, a guidebook on member care, a very holistic approach uh, of every aspect of, of what you do within your chapter and how it can uh, make your members feel valued and strengthen retention. And I just wanna share my screen for one second because I wanna show you where to find these chapter leadership specialists. So you look, I put my cursor under the chapters tab and I'm gonna go down now to chapter specialist support teams. And it will take you, here we go. It tells a little bit about what they are doing. It talks about who the members are and all of the areas of support, marketing and communications, technology, programming, membership, chapter leadership development, financial development. And all you need to do is put your name in, put your officer position, put the chapter, and then there's a drop down menu that shows you the uh, assistance that you're requiring. And then there's an, an, uh, an open ended place where you can say, okay, here's what I particularly need help with. And I have to tell you the response time, first of all, is wonderful. And we have had so many requests that I, I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled with this uh, initiative that we have created. And I hope that, uh, that you will take advantage of it. So I'm just going to end by thanking our, our participants who are with us tonight, our panelists, and most of all, I wanna wish you all a very happy, healthy, and blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. We love you all, and we will see you in the new year.